Okay, you're listening to the first hour of the weekend edition of the Corland Economics Report. So I'm Al Corland. Appreciate you joining me. I'm going to wrap up this hour with James Turk. James is, as I say every single time I have him on the show, in my opinion, the perhaps foremost expert on uh, on issues dealing with gold in the world. He's been involved in this sector for an awful long time. He founded a business called GoldMoney.com, and I bet you 99% of our listeners are are invested with you in goldmoney.com. James, let's take a look, first of all, uh, at the gold sector as to what's happened in the last uh, year. Gold in the last year uh, has has closed up 18.81%. That's not bad. Now, I don't remember how many years in a row that is, but I think that that's probably at least 10 years in a row that gold has done very well. I do not see that trend changing. Do you? No, I don't see it changing uh, either. You know, it's actually 11 years in a row. And the interesting thing, Al, is that gold is up double-digit rates of appreciation, not against just against the U.S. dollar, but against all of the major currencies of the world. So yeah. what you're seeing is a bull market in precious metals and a bear market in national currencies. You know, we had an interesting event this past week in that uh, Trader Raj came on the show and indicated to me that he had uncovered a substantial amount of buying in terms of gold spreads in the United States by a uh, a financial institution. Can you shed any light on that one? Uh, You know, there are a lot of hedge funds and, you know, traders and whatnot uh, with all uh, types of um, arrangements, but... You know, I think the bottom line for most people is just buy physical precious metals. It's a bull market, and we have a long way to go. Give me your comments on the demand. Is it going to stay the same, or is it going to increase uh, from the big, you know, the big elephant in the room, and that is mainland China? They seem to be buying an awful lot of gold. You think that's going to change in the future? I think it's going to probably mean more gold going to China, not less. You know, this is actually a big factor in the gold market at present. Up until about 18 months or so ago, domestic production in China satisfied Chinese demand. But as wealth is being created in China and as inflation in China is increasing, the demand for gold is is now uh, greater than what they can produce domestically. And China, in the last couple of months, has, has been importing as much gold as India has been importing, which is the largest, India had been the largest importer of gold in the world. So this is a profound uh, impact. Uh, that China is having on the gold market. And I think this is going to continue for the foreseeable future because China's monetary problems, you know, like the rest of the world, are not getting any better. The people are going into physical metal as a safe haven alternative. James, when are domestic investors, and you know, by domestic investors I'm referring right now to, to people in the U.S., when are they going to wake up? And, and understand that diversification of a certain amount of their capital into gold just does absolutely nothing but make sense. What do you think? Yeah, you know, first of all, some people will never wake up, um, and that's unfortunate because you really need gold to protect your wealth and preserve your purchasing power. But it's a process, Al. You know, as the gold price rises, more people start to pay attention. Uh, more people become better educated as to what you know, gold is uh, all about and start studying and learning about it and find out whether gold is useful to them. Um, And, you know, gold has usefulness because it's a tangible asset. It's money that's not based on someone's promise. In in that sense, gold is unique. Gold is also unique in the sense that it's got 5,000 years of history, whereas the currency that we're using backed by nothing is only 40 years of history. So, you know, if you compare those two, you know, gold clearly has the proven track record. And given all the uncertainty we're seeing with national currency, you know, people should be rightly worried about what's going to happen to you know the various national currencies around the world, including the U.S. dollar. So it is a process, and you know, as the gold price rises, more and more people will be drawn to to the gold market and understand you know what gold is all about. You know, it's interesting. This past week, Kathy and I went to a lecture, and they were talking about various various historical events that occurred. You know, and and I didn't realize this, but going as far back as the ancient uh, Egyptian culture. Gold has been a symbol of uh, eternity, which I find to be very, very interesting. You know, people ask, why, why has gold been used, for example, uh, in, in, in the Christian culture, for example, in terms of in the Catholic Church with the chalices, etc., etc.? And, and the reason that 
gold has been used in these areas isn't because the folks are necessarily, you know, engaging in incredibly opulent actions, but it's because gold doesn't rust, gold is very, very permanent, and gold does represent eternity. And boy, you know, that really got me to, to stop and think about why gold has become so, so vitally important in the investment community. I, it just, to me, it's just absolutely amazing that, that it hasn't taken on a bigger role, for lack of better terms. Projections for 2012, what do you think in terms of gold first? Well, much higher. You know, we had a big news event in over here in Europe today. Um, S&P announced that they're going to be downgrading uh, the French credit rating right. to AA+. Um, there's an announcement today by a French official, you know, confirming that point. Um, so, you know, France has now been downgraded just like the U.S. The more uh, sovereigns downgraded, not only from AAA, but, you know, even the ones that are already poor credits, they're going to be downgraded further. And in that kind of environment, Al, uh, Al where there's a lot of uncertainty, um, you know, people are going to look for safe havens, and gold is the ultimate safe haven. Gold and silver, I should add, for that matter. Let's kind of enlarge our, our discussion. I'd like to talk a little bit about projections for the various economic environments around the world. And I'd start out by saying I am very, very pessimistic about the United States and Europe. And the reason I say that is because in the United States and Europe, the degree of economic freedom, and these, these this is not an opinion, these are hard numbers that the Wall Street Journal brought out. In the U.S. and most of the European countries, the degree of economic freedom has decreased dramatically since 2007. Hard to believe, but true. In the United States right now, for example, the government, whether you're talking about the state uh, or the federal government, the government in general, uh, it now accounts for 40% of the gross domestic product of the country. That has been proven time and time again to be very, very detrimental for economic growth. And I have to tell you, in a macro sense, I am not optimistic about uh, 2012 in terms of economic growth or even using the word stability. Uh, not nearly as optimistic as I have been in the past. Comments? There are definitely a lot of things to worry about. And your point about uh, 40% of economic activity uh, in GDP, you know, coming from government spending, you know, the, there's, that's a higher percentage than during World War II when the country was on a war footing. Uh, so that should really take every, make everybody stand up and take notice. The point is, is that, you know, governments don't create wealth. Uh, what they do is they take wealth from the private sector and spend it however they want. And, uh, as a consequence, uh, what you really want is a large percentage of GDP coming from the private sector because it's this wealth that ultimately raises everyone's standards of living. Yeah. A country becomes poorer as a government taxes and spends more and more of the private wealth, uh, being created. Very, very definitely the case. And, you know, I, I guess the question that I have, and this has become almost an obsession with me, but the question that I have is why did we evolve into, why did Western society evolve into having an environment like this? Any comments on that? You know, I'm not really a sociologist, so it's really outside my area of speciality, but I am a student of monetary history. And, you know, we go through cycles, um, yeah. and uh, we're, in, we're in what I would say is a, a cycle that's not a good cycle, but, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, the wisdom will be there to put, uh, put us on, uh, on the back road, you know, uh, on the road that uh, uh, is headed in the right direction. And the key component of that, in my mind, is having sound money, you know, once again. And I'm in favor of reestablishing constitutional sound money, i.e. gold and silver coin. What do you say to the argument that a lot of folks have, primarily the liberal folks, I might add, in the United States, you know, their argument that, uh, you know, adherence to the gold standard makes absolutely no sense. Keynesian economics is the answer. Uh, Austrian economics just is absolutely uh, pie-in-the-sky dreams. I, I, I find that statement to be incredibly ignorant, and, and I find it to be amazing that you've got a, a, a Nobel a Nobel laureate economist like Paul Grug Krugman, who believes that. I mean, that go that just flies in the face of of common sense in my mind. My mind. We got thirty seconds left. Comment. Yeah, you know, there's a difference between common sense and economic theory. 
You know, economic theory might mean one thing, but common sense is something entirely different. And my point is, is that if you look at real incomes of American people, the, the peak was reached in 1973 when you're adjusting for inflation and yep. taxes and everything else. Yep. It's been downhill ever since. So I think the liberal formula has not worked. No, the liberal formula has not worked, and it's been proven time and time again, and we need to get away with it. James, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You guys out there, stick around. We're going to be back with the second hour of the weekend edition of the Corland Economics Report. For our upcoming appearance schedule, visit kereport.com. The Corland Economics Report will be back in just a moment. 